All right, uh, so um, this is a um, work that we are going to present at Penn soon, and it's joint work with Victoria, Russell, Dominic, and Huber. And um, we start from, uh, fr from the concept of ring signatures that you have heard before, like a few seconds ago. And here we have a primitive that is usually thought to be cryptographically secure. So the idea is you, ha you have a bunch of people, uh, like in this picture, and one of them um, is signing a message. And uh, we want two uh, settings basically to be indistinguishable, like this one and a second one where the message is signed by a different uh, group member. Um, so like there's a judge and decides which, which of these two um, settings is, is, is reality and you get cryptographic primitives. So cryptographic security. So there's only a negligible possibility for an efficient des uh, decider, distinguisher um, to actually draw a conclusion. Uh, however, the setting kind of becomes interesting once, once you add a lot of additional parties. So if you have many participants in the uh, system, you may not want to include every participant in your ring signature, uh, especially as these things tend to be linear in the size of people that you include, and then things blow up and become inefficient. And so it kind of becomes very important to figure out how to select the right members. And of course, this is um, motivated by anonymous cryptocurrencies. And the original approach taken there was just to sample uniform from all um, potential signers, um, which is highly problematic for the very easy, uh, very obvious reason that not everyone who could potentially create a transaction is actually even uh, equally likely. So if you see a transaction and it has one very one person in the set that is very likely to have signed this transaction and a lot of people that are really unlikely to have signed it, then you probably already know who, who created the signature. And this, uh, the anonymity of your system is considerably worse than what you, were, uh, uh, what you had in mind. Um, the kind of solution that was proposed and implemented there is um, uh, to select a, according to some distribution distribution that is um, likely or assumed to be the actual uh, spender distribution. So you, si you don't uh, sample your decoys uh, right, like uniformly, but you sample them uh, with the same probability that they actually have to sign themselves. And this is assumed to be good. And we will actually figure out that this actually is a good approach. Um, but of course, like the, the question remains, what is actually um, a good distribution? Uh, what, or what is a good sampling? Uh, what does it mean to be good uh, with respect to what is, uh, is such a sampling uh, procedure good? And this turns out to be a quite non-trivial question. And to that regard, we are looking at uh, a few natural sampling strategies. Uh, the first one is uniform. You just sample uniformly from the set of all possible signers, uh, as we've seen before. That kind of works, of course. Uh, then there's the idea of sampling with the same distribution that a person would actually also be like uh, be be expected to sign a message. So uh, the idea here is it might be very very unlike that this participant in my ring um, is actually the signer. But it's also very, very unlikely that this person was sampled as a decoy in this, uh, for, for this transaction. And the idea or the intuition is that these two uh, cancel out and you basically don't know anything about who in this um, set of actual signers that you have cryptographically um, that, that would be the, uh, the actual signer. And then there's a third idea and basically the thing is, we noticed uniform sampling wasn't a particularly smart idea. And the problem here is that um, potential signers have vastly different probabilities to actually sign such a transaction or such a message. And here the idea is in a way to create a setting where all the to actually also sign this. Um, so how does this work in, in detail? You have a bunch of potential signers and 
you, you chop this up into slices and you hope that at least within one slice, the probability of the, this one uh, person to make this transaction or sign this transaction um, is equal. And uh, then you can just create rings within these, uh, these petitions. Um, and this is kind of justified if you look at uh, classical examples of anonymous currencies. Uh, usually the one information that is obviously leaked or the, that is clearly leaked to the, uh, from that system is, is the age of the transaction. And the leakage that you would uh, you often look at is like the, the fact that um, addresses that very recently received some value will also with high probability use that uh, money quite soon again. Um, so chopping them up into pieces that are exactly the same age, so like within one block, for example, um, seems to uh, provide a reasonable trade-off. So you can kind of say they have the same probability. So this is the idea. Then, then you have a second problem. Uh, I mean, you want to evaluate your, your ring sampling strategies, right? And um, for, for this evaluation, you need to some, some sort of ground truth. And um, as we're dealing with an anonymous systems, uh, this is not super easy to come to. Um, what has been done in the past, and we're kind of also following this path, is I, I mean, you can have some probably unrealistic assumptions, like the distribution is just uniform. Um, but that. As we've seen, like this says, like uh, our uniform sampler would be pretty good, which it is not. And you can maybe draw conclusions from a non-anonymous -anon system. So you can say, like, I know a lot of things about Bitcoin transactions. I can do some guesswork to see to say, like, this is how how people behave in in, in Bitcoin. We believe that people might behave similarly in other currencies. And and go from there. And um, to that end, we, we kind of looked at uh, Bitcoin transactions. And here we uh, look at the age of a transaction at the point when it's spent. And yeah, we can, we can uh, fit some, uh, some probability distributions in there. And our conclusion is like a shifted Pareto distribution seems to very nicely capture reality. And this is why we will use that as a baseline distribution. Um, I've already also said earlier that Monero is, use, is assuming some uh, gamma distribution, um, which is why we also included that distribution in, in the analysis. So um, this is okay. This is the distribution they sample to, but their idea obviously is, or their idea is that they sample the same distribution that they believe um, people would use. So this is basically our ground truth, and it's not particularly great. So, yeah, it's in a way it's just advanced guessing, and I'm not sure there's much we can do about that part actually. Um, yeah, so this is um, where we start from, and then um, question is how do you define uh, a good sampling strategy, and um, one thing that has been like proposed in the past and re uh, used repeatedly in anonymous communication literature is to basically go via entropy. Um, the idea is basically how much information do you still could you uh, is still to be learned about who initi initiates this anonymous action after you've uh, observed the system. So you know how the system behaves, and then you're you're asked to guess like. Who did sign this transaction? Um, this is uh, the uh, this entropy notion, and it's kind of convenient. Uh, we have a number that is somewhat compared to different centers, different currencies that you want to compare the anonymity of, uh, do stuff like that, and it all. Uh, kind of neatly ties into advantage. Of course, you don't, you will not get into into the like in the order of magnitude of a security parameter or something like that. Um, 
but well, there's just like, this is how it is. Um, so how do, do we go there? Um, there, there are many ways of, uh, of looking at entropy and looking at probabilities and we're kind of conservative here. So we uh, to uh, take min entropy or guessing entropy. And this is basically the probability of guessing um, the maximum over all, all, all possible. So, so we, we take the probability of guessing the, like the most likely event. Um, and we also need this in a conditional setting. So um, given some site information, what is the guessing probability of, yeah, what is the guessing pr uh, uh, probability? And then lift this to an entropy setting, where we just like, it's just like taking logarithms essentially for, for both of those definitions. And then you end up at uh, what we call anonymity in, in this work. And it's really just what you expect. So you hear, we give this, this is the ring sampling algorithm. So the probability uh, here, here we have this um, uh, as like uh, conditional uh, information you have, the, you, you're given the ring sampled and you have to figure out how much information is still hidden or is still there about the actual signer of, of, of this message. Um, yeah, so this gives you a value and it has kind of like a neat interpretation in, in many ways. So say um, if, you have, if you get like an, an anonymity of five, then it means like two to the five people are your effective anonymity side size. And you're basically as well hidden as among 32 equally likely people. Um, and um, this is what we what we ended up uh, comparing in, uh, to this end. Um, then what you of, of course absolutely do want is some sort of robustness um, because as I said earlier, we don't we don't even remotely know how, how the real distribution of spenders look like. And now if you have like a comparison of different sampling strategies for, yeah, and they give you some numbers and this one looks way better than the other one, then maybe you actually would like to have a result that tells, like you would like to rely on that fact, but you don't even know um, like, like what the real distribution is. So you should be able to tolerate some divergence in the, um, in the actual spender or, or signer distribution. And this is exactly what um, robustness gives us here. So if we have an, reasonable good guess at what the actual um, signer distribution would have been, then anonymity also gives us a reasonable approximation of um, the actual anonymity in the actual system. So yeah, this is pretty good in that regard or useful. Um, and then once you have such a uh, definition, you kind of start by looking at uh, corner cases, edge cases and one obvious example that you want to look at is, is looking at, at an all sampler. Here, the all sampler is basically the simple setting, the trivial setting, right? So I said, you could have the setting where you really, really have a ring signature by everyone. And what you would hope for is that if you include everyone in your ring signature, you basically get an optimal anonymity value. And our result here can be interpreted in exactly this way. And it says basically the, um, uh, the anonymity in such an all sampler is um, only depends on the um, like on the on the signer distribution, and of course, if you already know beforehand who will be the next signer, then there's no hope to uh, have any more anonymity in the system left. But if there is a high level of entropy in the system, so you don't really know who is going to be the next signer, then our anonymity definition will tell you that this is perfectly preserved. So it still stands there. It says you exactly what, um, yeah, how much anonymity you expect to have in such an all sampling setting. Um, then the other corner case is the one sampler. And obviously if you have a ring signature that is signed by exactly one person, then you shouldn't have any anonymity left because obviously you know that this one person who is the only potential, this is also exactly what we get here. Um, 
So you have an anonymity of zero, which is also kind of nice. So you know there's like a lower bound and it's called zero, which is, yeah, I think a pretty reasonable lower bound as far as numbers go. Um, so um, now we need to kind of look at the other samplers that we, we described before that are kind of realistic. And we, we start with the uniform sampler and we can calculate this uh, somewhat complicated term. And what we learned from this is essentially if, if we have an un uniform uh, signal distribution, um, then we get optimal anonymity for, uh, for, uh, from, from this uniform sampler, which is also kind of maybe not surprising. Um, but if we have a signal distribution that, uh, that is somewhat exponential, that values um, very new signers, um, assigns very high probabilities to new signers, then it, this quickly goes very, very bad. And um, how bad can essentially be seen here. So we have the uniform and optimal way line is up here. And once you add a few accounts to a system, so obviously as, as there are more accounts in the system already like this probability drops, uh, the anonymity drops. And as we can see, like even for moderate numbers of like, say we have 1000 um, transactions in our system, uh, we are already at this line where there's less than one bit of anonymity left, even for relatively large ring sizes like 32. And um, for orientation, uh, realistically, we have something between 10 and 16 for systems like Monero. So this is the setting in which we, we expect, expect to operate in a way. So then there's the mimicking sampler, and this is our formalization of what Monero is currently doing. And this is basically having an estimation of uh, signer probabilities and picking according to that uh, probability. And uh, we have here a very ugly divided by two in our anonymity term. And this is the best we could prove in closed form. But if we, uh, if we get a bit more concrete and look at um, concrete distributions and don't uh, restrict ourselves to closed forms, but just do some computation. Um, this is the, the bound that we managed to prove. It's down here. The, the optimal is still here, the, uh, the uh, red line. And for all the settings with all the distributions, we are getting reasonably close to this optimal value. Um, so it's not perfect, but reasonably close. And that kind of supports the intuition that sampling according to the actual uh, expected distri uh, signer distribution is a moderately good strategy. Um, then there's our partitioning sampler. And here we restrict the um, assumed distribution to actually be flat for within one block. So as I said, like, we, we explicitly choose this, uh, this uh, sampling strategy because we assume that within one uh, cryptocurrency block, uh, the probability that each of these possible signers that are included in that block uh, as outputs uh, are equally likely. And here we also get an optimal result. So um, if we follow that, um, strategy and our assumption is valid, then you get optimal anonymity. Uh, now, of course, this is kind of tricky and we see this already here on the right side. Here, there are not enough um, signers to form another petition to, to, to add more rings to the system. And so we have some cutoffs between the blocks where we have to mix things from an older and from a newer block and they are already the assumption is um, not super accurate in a way. Um, yes, so basically there, there are two valid sampling strategies that we came up with. The one is, is mimicking sampling, um, which of course suffer, suffers heavily from the fact that you would need um, at least close estimate. Reasonable, but we don't, or I don't know how we could uh, even 
find such a distribution for an anonymous cryptocurrency. And we can, of course, uh, guess from, from non-anonymous systems, but that would just assume that people in anonymous and non-anonymous systems behave roughly the same, which is, a, <laughs> yeah, maybe it's a valid assumption, but uh, I'm not super convinced there. Um, but yes, um, yeah, then you get kind of perfect anonymity. And the alternative solution is uh, partitioning sampling. Uh, where we assume that all the information that you can have about potential signers is basically the, 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 the age, so the block when the signer first appears. And of course, this is all is, is maybe justifiable if you look at a, like a, if you observe the, uh, the blockchain, for example. Um, if you actually uh, run a mining pool, you will already have an order and time order between different transactions because you may receive one transaction before the other and you have way more fine-grained knowledge of uh, how old the transaction is. Um, and then those sites are not as good anymore, um, but it's still our preferred choice. Okay, and this is basically it. Um, as we already mentioned, uh, this, uh, this paper will be presented at PETS in, I think, two weeks roughly. And yeah, we're we are kind of still broadly interested in this area. So if you have any challenging, uh, open, uh, challenging questions on uh, how would you sample such a ring, uh, uh, feel free to ask.